Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Aaron Sternke here. This is going to be part two of the Artist's House Pro Tools tutorial. And uh, if you've been following along with part one, you'll see we still have our uh, Pro Tools test session up here. I have uh, just a couple things going on. I got, uh, uh, I got a click and an acoustic track. And, um, and today I'm going to show you guys a little bit more in depth of some of the menus and some of the functions of Pro Tools and hopefully get you guys uh, to where you want to be so you can be comfortable using this program to record uh, your own music because that, that's what it's all about. So let's get right into it. First of all today we're going to look at our, we're going to concentrate on our main screen here which is called the edit window in Pro Tools. There's two main windows as we discussed in, in the first section, the edit window and the mix window. And we're going to concentrate on the edit window. You can do almost everything in Pro Tools from this window. You can mix stuff from this window. You can do uh, lots of things, and as you can see, it's a, it's got a lot of um, a, a lot of icons and buttons and a lot of functionality. And might look daunting at first, but really, uh, it's all there to help you, uh, you know, create your own music. So uh, it it uh, it's exciting to me. Um, so let's take a look at uh, just a few parts of the screen. We're gonna we're gonna look at this top bar a little bit later, and and just go through this entire thing. But first of all. Let's take a look to the left-hand side of the screen here. You have this, uh, this little sidebar, and at the top it says Tracks. And what this is, is the Show Hide uh, window. And as you can see, um, it, it says Click and Acoustic, which corresponds to our, our two tracks that we have in our session. And if I, if I click on the Click track, it makes it disappear. So this is a really great way of, you know, it, it, it hasn't deleted your track, it's just it's just, and now I've clicked on the acoustic, so it looks like there's nothing there, but now I, I can click them again and they're back. So if you have, you know, if, you, if you're trying to get rid of clutter in your session, if you've got a bunch of tracks that are muted and you're not, you're not using, you know, just you can show and hide them and it's really, um, uh, it's really a good thing and, and, can, and can make your session uh, a lot easier. Moving down from that, we have our edit groups, um, uh, sidebar as well. We don't have, uh, we haven't created any groups. By default, there's a group that's called All. And uh, if you click on that, then everything you do to one track, it's going to do to every track. Uh, as you can see, we only have two tracks in our session, so that's all that it's affecting right now. But basically, you, wh what you can do with groups is uh, you can uh, like let's say you have a drum kit and you got the levels just perfect um, and uh, you're mixing along and but then uh, you find that you want the whole level of the drum kit to to come up in volume well instead of going to every track and turning it up you know uh, 1 dB or whatever uh, if you've created a drum group you can just grab one fader and the, and the entire drum group will automatically turn up which is really great and um, and a lot of uh, a lot of people utilize that, and pro mixers use that definitely for uh, for their mixing, and it's and it's very handy. Now, moving across the screen to the right hand side, we have the regions bin. Now, not a lot of people use this or understand it, but if you do understand it, it can be very powerful and make uh, make your workflow a lot faster. Now, what this is is. Uh, this is, is showing you basically everything that you've recorded. Now, as you can see, we only have one track in there because that's all we've recorded in this session. But anytime I want to grab this same acoustic file, I can come over here to the regions bin and grab it, and I can drag it into my session, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. Uh, as you can see, when I, when, I, uh, when I clicked on this in the regions bin, my region over here uh, of my acoustic track became selected. It, it turned black, which means that it's selected. And that means that's corresponding to that, and that's the same thing. And we're going to get into this a little bit more uh, a little later, but uh, the region's bin is a really powerful thing. Um, one little side note, uh, if you come down here to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, there's a, there's a tiny little, <laughs> a lot of these icons are real small, but there's a tiny little double arrow pointing to the right. And if I click that, I'm going to hide my regions bin. I'll just do it for you guys. So now I have a little more workspace. So if you don't, 
if you're not using your regions bin or you don't, you know, you don't want to look at it or whatever, you can, you can hide that. And as you can see, there's the arrow again, and I can show and hide it. And across to the left-hand side of the screen as well, there's the same little double arrow. And I can show and hide my groups and my uh, show hide track list. So if I, if I hide them both, you can see I have a lot of workspace. So it's a really versatile, uh, uh, you know, cool feature of Pro Tools that they allow you to show and hide these things. I'm just going to ke keep, uh, keep them up for now uh, so, we can, you know, uh, so we can use them uh, in our session. So uh, that's a real brief overview of the, of the edit window. The, one of the very next things that you're probably going to want to do at home uh, if you're recording uh, pr probably a lot of you guys have loops that you work with, and you want to import a loop into your session and, and, uh, and use it. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to import audio into your own, uh, into your own session. So it's a, really, uh, it's a really simple thing to do. What we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the File menu, and we're going to go down to Import. And there's a few options here, session data, audio, MIDI, video. You can actually do video. Uh, region groups. And we're just going to hit audio. And the hotkey for this is Shift Apple I. And that is going to bring up the import audio dialog box, which is a, uh, a nice big box that shows you a bunch of options for importing. My audio that I want to import is on my Raptor drive. So I'm going to click Raptor. It's just one of my hard drives. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to double click Loops. And I have a sorted by BPM because I want to find a loop that's 120 beats per minute, which is what my session tempo is set at. Double click that. And I got a bunch of loops in here, a bunch of different tempos. Here's some that are 120. So let's, uh, let's click on one of these, Hopscotch. And I'm going to go down here to the, to, the, to the bottom of the dialog box. And you, there's a little, it's a really cool feature. You can preview the loop before you bring it in. So, you know, if it's not right for the session, you don't have to uh, uh, needlessly import it. So I'm going to click play here. That's pretty nice, but that's not quite right for what I'm, uh, uh, I'm looking for. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another one here. That's nice too, but I... I think I heard this one earlier. Yeah, that's just a nice simple, a nice simple beat. Now, if you look right here, uh, it shows you what type of file it is. It's a WAV file. It shows you the length, it shows you the size, the bit depth, and the sample rate. Now, if you remember, when we started our session, we did our session at 24 bits, 48K. And as you can see, this, uh, the bit depth of this file is 16 bits and it's 44.1k so I'm gonna need to convert it now I'm selected on here and that puts it in uh, in this little dialog box here and I have to hit convert so it's gonna convert it up to uh, up to 48k so that it plays back in the right speed and that it's right for our session uh, once I do that I'm just gonna go over here and click done Then it's going to ask me where I want to store it. Now, it, it, uh, it automatically pulls up the right place to store it. So don't mess with that. Just click Choose. And now it's going to ask me, now, do you want to put this in the regions list or do you want to put it on a new track? Now, I can, I can just keep it in the regions list if I don't want to use it right now and I want to you know, mess with it later. Uh, but for me right now, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it... Uh, uh, on a new track, on its own track, and click OK. And there it is. Uh, right under our acoustic track there, we have, uh, we have some drums, and I'll, I'll just play that. We've got a nice, we've got a nice fill in there, which is great. Um, but anyway, so you can see uh, that, it's, that it's really easy to, uh, to import audio. Um, uh, into your session, and the possibilities are sort of limitless with this. And of course, you don't only have to import loops, you can import 
um, audio from other sessions. You know, you can trade files with people and and things like that. And uh, that should get you uh, should get you where you want to go. And in the next section, we're going to talk about how to manipulate some of this audio, how to do some effects on it, and how to really get uh, really get it sounding good inside of Pro Tools. All right, so now we're going to have a look at some of the menus, some of the functions, some of the features of Pro Tools uh, that we haven't got into yet, and uh, hopefully it'll uh, allow you to be uh, even more in control of your, of your session and of your music. Um, let's get right into it. We're going to go up here to the upper left-hand corner of our screen, and you'll see 